Everything in our universe is made up of particles, and these particles come in two different types, fermions and bosons. Some examples of fermions are electrons, muons, quarks, protons, neutrons, and neutrinos, while bosons are particles like photons, gluons, pions, and the Higgs. But what exactly is the difference between the two? Why go to the trouble of separating the particles into these two classes? To tackle this question, we have to look at how we describe the states of quantum particles with wave functions. Now, these wave functions are a bit weird because of the fact that they can exist in superpositions, or scaled sums, of physical states. Just like normal vectors exist as superpositions of unit vectors laying along our axes. So let's consider the xy plane where x hat is the vector of length 1 laying along the x axis and y hat is the vector of length 1 laying along the y axis. We can write a general vector in terms of x hat and y hat by scaling these unit vectors and summing them together. If we scale x hat by some constant c sub x and we scale y hat by some other constant c sub y, the new vector is given by c sub x, x hat, plus c sub y, y hat. Similarly, if we have a particle which can exist in two different physical states, call them the red state and the blue state, or r and b for short, we can write a general wave function for the particle as a scaled sum of these two physical states. Now, here's where things get a little strange. Since the state of the particles exists as a superposition, we can never exactly predict the outcome of a color measurement. However, we can calculate the probability of measuring the particle as either red or blue. This is done by taking the square of the absolute value of the coefficient. So, for example, the probability of measuring a red particle is given by the absolute value of CR squared, and similar for measuring a blue particle. Keeping this all in mind, we can now move on to thinking about a system of two identical particles. If each of these particles can again be measured to be either red or blue, we have four possibilities for the outcome of a color measurement, both red, both blue, particle 1 red, particle 2 blue, and particle 1 blue, particle 2 red. Like before, we can write a general state of the system as a scaled sum of these possible outcomes, which we can write more concisely as the sum over i and j, c i j times the i j state, where i and j can be either red or blue. Now, we're interested in what happens when we swap the states of our two particles. At first, we might not think that anything happens, since the two particles are identical, but this is the kind of intuition that kind of goes out the window with quantum mechanics. In fact, there's nothing saying that our wave function can't be different when we switch the particles, since we never physically measure the wave function. Calling this different wave function psi prime, we can write it in terms of new coefficients c prime ji. Now, although our wave function can change when the particles are switched, any physical observations should not change, since the particles are identical. This means that the probabilities to measure each state should be the same. In other words, the magnitude of c i j squared should be equal to the magnitude of c prime i j squared or just magnitude cij equals magnitude cij prime, since magnitudes are always positive. Another way to write this is cij is equal to a times c prime ij, where a is just some constant with magnitude 1. So, our new state is written in terms of the old constants, as psi prime is equal to the sum over ij times a times cij, times the ij state. Okay, so now we need to think about what happens when we switch the particles twice. Keeping our rules consistent, we should just get another factor of a. However, since we only have two particles and we've swapped them twice, we should end up at exactly the same state we started with. Solving this equation, we see that there are only two options for a. It can only be plus or minus one. This is exactly the difference between fermions and bosons. When two identical bosons are swapped, the wave function doesn't change. But when two identical fermions are swapped, the wave function picks up an overall minus sign. 
Now, this has some very big consequences, but one of the most important is if we consider what happens when the two particles are in the same state, say both red. For bosons, when the particles are switched, nothing interesting happens, the state just looks the same. However, when we switch to fermions, we must get a minus sign, which tells us that CRR is equal to minus CRR. Well, the only way that this can happen is if CRR is equal to zero. Now, remember that these coefficients correspond to probabilities when we square their magnitude. So, this tells us that it is impossible to ever measure two fermions which are both in the red state. In fact, this is true more generally and is summed up in what's known as the Pauli exclusion principle. No two fermions can ever occupy the same quantum state. This incredibly fundamental law is at the heart of many natural phenomena. It explains why only two electrons can be in an atomic orbital, it allows for the existence of semiconductors, and it's the reason that objects like white dwarfs and neutron stars exist without collapsing. On the other side, the fact that bosons do not satisfy the Pauli exclusion principle also leads to interesting physics, such as Bose-Einstein condensates, where collections of very cold bosons all pile into the same quantum state, leading to quantum effects on macroscopic scales. It's pretty incredible to think about the fact that all of these amazing physical phenomena can be explained by a single humble minus sign.